there are links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, as well as my tip video playlist down below. Now, before I jump into anything, I have a quick little disclaimer I want to go over. Firstly, there are three basic strategies you can make in my opinion. You have a utility soaking strat, a killing strat, and a time wasting strat. Those are the three basics in my opinion. I don't care about your opinion or your turtle's opinion or your dog's opinion. This is in my opinion and you're watching the video for a reason because you care about my opinion and my mindset towards the game. So with this strat in specific that you're looking at right now, what I'm trying to achieve is wasting the attacker's time and wasting their utility. Those are my two main goals. And you should always set an end goal for your strat. Obviously on defense, you wanna win the round, that's fine and dandy. But for a strategy, you need to understand what you want to do with it and how you want to execute it and how you want to play it. So that is my end goal for this strat. Again, waste time and soak the attacker's utility. Now, if you're looking for a video to copy strats from, this is not the video you want to watch. I'm not here to show you strats that you can just copy and paste to you or your own team. What I'm trying to achieve with this video is initiate the creative mindset of the player or viewer. Now, if you like this video and you want to see me make an attacker guide, get this video to 300 likes and you will see that video posted in no time. Before you even think about making a strategy, you need to go over what I just said previously. What is your end goal for your strat? Do you want to waste time, kill people, or waste their utility? For this example in specific, as I just said, I want to waste the attacker's time and soak their utility. Well, if I was looking at this strat and I was figuring out a way to counter it, I would just bring Thatcher and just EMP where the muter mozzies are at so that way I can drone freely and not be countered. If I was playing this strat on defense, I would ban the Thatcher so that way I would waste more of the attacker's time. So you always have to think about who is the most effective operator I can ban in order for my strat to capitalize on the enemy. That is step one to any single strat. Okay, step two of making an awesome and creative strat. You need to figure out your reinforcements. Now I'm quickly gonna go over mine because I wanna show you and explain what I was thinking when I made this strat in specific. So the bomb sites are reading and dining. This is a fairly common bomb site on Cafe Dostoevsky, and I'm going to explain the reinforcements now. So firstly, the reading wall. Obviously, it's a wall that leads directly into the site. I don't need to go over much more. Reinforce those walls. The two train walls. Now, why these are reinforced? If you've ever played on Cafe, you know that there's a fireplace located right around here. And why these two are reinforced is because that allows me to channel the attackers in through this fireplace. They literally have to crouch walk through. And if someone is on white stairs here, they can get a free kill on that person trying to crouch walk through. That is why those two walls are reinforced. Now, this laundry reinforcement, why that is there? is because if I wanna have the mute or the mozzie sitting here and throw their nitro cell to the default plant here or here, they can kill both of those spots with one easy nitro cell toss. That is why that reinforcement is there so they can sit safely in the laundry room without being shot from their reading door. Now, moving on to upstairs, you see that the Christmas hatch is reinforced. And this is because if the attackers wanna attack the dining side, which is here, they need to have upstairs control. Most of the time, they will need upstairs control. The reason that's reinforced is so that way I can waste a set of Hibana pellets or an exothermic from Thermite in order for them to drop down the hatch. So instead of this hatch being soft and they can just buck or Zofia it or sledge it, they actually have to use some sort of hard breach utility in order to get that hatch open. Now the two freezer walls. The reasoning as to why these two are reinforced in specific and not the two going into Christmas is because if you look at cafe and this bomb site in specific, there are three main ways the attackers can get from Christmas side to cocktail side. The first one is through the long bar, the second one is through freezer, and the third is through the white hallway. So it would take more reinforcements for me to hold freezer because I would have to reinforce the freezer wall as well as the bathroom wall in order to hold freezer effectively. Now you can also cut off the rotates from new hatch and the skylight from the attacking side. So that makes me think I do not want to hold freezer because it would take a lot more utility and reinforcements in order to hold that effectively. So as I said, there are three main ways you can cross the lung bar through freezer and then the white hallway. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of utility in the lung bar side. And why is that there? Well, in order for the attackers to effectively apply vertical pressure, they're going to need cocktail side. So that is why those two reinforcements are there. If anyone tries to apply vertical pressure when there's still a defender upstairs on the cocktail side, they can simply shoot whoever is in the long bar here, and that would be a free kill for them. So those are my 10 reinforcements and why they are there. 
Now I'm going to go over utility placement and operator placement. Okay, so starting off with Jaeger's utility placement. The first ADS, as you can see, is in cocktail, and that is so you can support and deny any projectiles that are trying to kill or concuss or stun the person that is playing cocktail. So that is why that ADS is there. The second one is tarp, because most of the time you should and will need someone to hold the white corridor so no one can just crouch walk through and kill the guy cocktail. So that is why that reinforcement is there in case they apply too much pressure or they want to nave the Jaeger there or the Mazian on white stairs, the ADS will catch it. And the third and last ADS is on the reading door protecting the Goyo shield. Now I will get into depth on the Goyo shield and its placement a little bit later, but for right now, that third ADS is right there. Now moving on to Jaeger's barbed wire. Since Jaeger has so much utility and running around to do, I'm going to give him the easy sets of barbed wire. The first one is going to go on the 90 corridor, so that way nobody can crouch walk up in and go through one of these two rotates into the bomb site. The second set of barb is going to go on the bottom side of the white stairs, so that way, again, nobody can crouch walk up. Now we're going to talk about Maestro's utility placement. His first evil eye is going to go on the pillar and the long bar. Now, why is this here? Well, there's two reasons primarily. Firstly, he can get intel and zap the attackers as well as shoot their drones. A lot of people that play Maestro don't play him properly. If you know your evil eye is safe, you need to be shooting any utility you can see in your line of sight on the evil eye. There are times where I've scrimmed against bad teams and I've shot eight or nine of their drones simply because they don't care about my evil eye and that allows me to completely mess with their drone economy. Now his second evil eye placement is going to be in pillar again primarily for intel and somewhat of the drones but if you're playing a really bad team or sometimes even teams simply forget or don't see the evil eye in pillar what this allows you to do is shoot any sort of hard breach utility on the wall obviously they might bring a maverick and you and you can't shoot a blowtorch but most of the time they're either going to bring a habana or a thermite and what this evil eye allows you to do is shoot that utility off the wall if they seem to skip the step of getting that evil eye. Now, Maestro's barbed wire placement. His first set is going to go in the long bar between the back single bar and the long bar itself. Now, it's really important and you pay attention to this specific spot of the barbed wire. I'm not putting it over here and I'm not putting it near the mute jammer. The reason it's going in between these two bars is because it's creating a choke point for the attackers. So I know if I put the barbed wire back further, that it's going to allow the attackers to simply walk right by it and I don't hear a sound cue of the barbed wire. So it's really important that you pay attention to exactly where that barbed wire is. And when you make your own strats, you need to think about things like this. And the second piece of barbed wire is going to go in the pixel door to white hallway. Now the reason this is there is so that way the person playing top white has a sound cue of someone smacking this barbed wire and breaking it so that way they know okay wow someone is there now so i might have to shoot this goyo shield here very soon that is why that piece of barbed wire is there now let's say that barb wasn't there that might give the attackers the chance to walk up to the shield and use the shield to their advantage instead of the defenders because you can simply sit behind the shield look through the window slits and you might get a free kill off of it okay now we're going to talk about goyo's utility placement so with goyo as i said i'm going to go into depth on this shield in specific now why this shield is here in combination with the ads is because most of the time when i scrimmed this map 90 percent of the teams wanted to take from the pillar side because it seems easier and it really is but when this goyo shield is here they're going to have to use some sort of utility to get rid of this shield. So if they don't know about the ADS, then that might lead to Zofia's last impact grenade or, or Ash's last Ash charge being eaten up by the ADS simply because they wanted to get rid of the Goyo shield. So let's say that happens and they have no more utility in order to deal or destroy the Goyo shield. Well, where's the next best spot they can go? They can go through the mining hallway or they can go through mining, into train, into fireplace. Either way, you are funneling the attackers into a choke point that gives you an advantage. That is the most important part of any strategy. You need to understand the map and the map control you need in order to effectively execute your strat. So I know if they don't get rid of this Goyo shield and they wanna take reading, they're gonna have to go through mining hallway or through mining train into dining. 
Either way, I'm funneling them, which is what I'm trying to do. And if they come through the reading door, that's also fine because you're still funneling them into a spot that still gives you an advantage. So that is why that Goyo shield is there in specific. Now the second Goyo shield, why this is here. Again, as I just said a little bit a while ago, I want to waste the attacker's time. If I know someone is on the pixel door, they break the barbed wire and I might see them push up or I might get the feeling that they want to play aggressive on me. I'm going to shoot the shield so that way I know I have 10 seconds to either rotate out or reposition because each Goyo shield and its fire lasts for 10 seconds when it's detonated. Now, the reason that Goyo is bringing impacts instead of a nitro cell is so that way he can make these two rotates here in the matter of seconds. We already have two nitro cells on Mute and Mozzie, so we don't need to worry about having a third. Now, moving on to Mute and his utility. So as you can see, Mute has three Mute Jammers upstairs. Again, as I said, I want to waste the attacker's time and their control of the map. So these two Mute Jammers are really important here. This one here is specific for the Skylight, so that way nobody can dr just drop their drone down and they have free reign to drone cocktail or long bar. And this one is there, so that way they can't just drive their drone through new bar and in through long bar. Those are two really important and specific Mute Jammer placements. And neither of these can be shot from the skylight. I've tested them before, and I know they both work effectively because my team used to run a strat that I made very similar to this. So I know for a fact that these Mute Jammers work properly. Now this Mute Jammer here is simply so that the attackers can't just hard breach this wall for free. They have to use some sort of utility or waste time in order to destroy this Mute Jammer. And same deal with this one. Now. The reasoning Mute has a Nitro, as I just said, for any default plants that want to go down in reading on the door. You can throw a Nitro cell from Laundry onto the reading default plants and kill the planter. Now let's talk about Mozzie and his utility placement. Now let's go over this one first and this is the most important Mozzie pest location and I'll explain why. So this Mozzie pest needs to be thigh level or hip level and it needs to be on the right side of the door. Now, why it needs to be there is because, again, the skylight. They'll still be able to see this mozzie pest, but it will take much longer for them to find it and shoot it. If I can waste five to 10 seconds of the attacker's time just because they need to shoot one lousy mozzie pest, that is a huge trade of time for one piece of utility. And again, the evil eye is here as backup for any drones that slip through. The Maestro Cam will shoot those drones, so you don't have to worry about a drone slipping through as long as Maestro does his job properly. And the last two Mozzie Pests go on Pixel Door and Bathroom Door. Now this bathroom one might seem like a waste, but the reason this is here is because the attackers can simply shoot out the bathroom wall and just jump their drone right through the hole and drive straight through bathroom if that Mozzie Pest wasn't there. So that is why that is there in specific. Again, same deal with Mozzie's secondary utility. The reason he has the Nitro is so he can deny any vertical play that he might feel he can kill and any default plants that are near him. Now that I've gone over the operators and their utility placement, I'm going to go over their positioning. So the reason that Jaeger is here is because he has an extremely strong gun and he can take these gunfights at a fairly decent range. Now, Maestro placement is really important and why he is here is really important. The reasoning Maestro is in the cocktail area is because if he needs to, he can react off of his own evil eye that he has complete control of and possibly net him a free kill. Also, let's say the attackers just wanna rush the long bar. Well, if you didn't know, Maestro has a really, really balanced weapon that has 81 bullets and a high fire rate, and he can completely mow down any attacker that crosses his path. So that is why Maestro is there in that specific spot. Mozzie spot isn't as important. Anyone can change out Mozzie for any other operator and play the same spot, but the angle that he is holding is really important. So as you can see, there's a red line on the white wall. The reason that is there is to show that there's going to be holes on this wall so that way Mozzie can hold the fireplace push from white stairs. So I would want this whole wall shotgunned out, a straight line that gives Mozzie a line of sight from the white stairs platform into the fireplace rotate. And lastly, Mute and his placement is somewhere in reading. It really would depend and adjust on where the attackers are pushing from primarily but he is also another really important operator and his placement. 
The reasoning he is the one primarily on the bomb site is because he has the shotgun that can simply one or two shot someone at a close distance. So if I put him upstairs where Jaeger or Maestro are, he's not going to be nearly as effective as they are in those specific spots. That is why Mute is there. Because if he needs to go 90 and shotgun anyone, he's right there. And if he needs to shoot anyone that's trying to come through the reading door, he has the shotgun and ready for it. Now again, this is a strategy that you shouldn't copy or just think it's amazing and apply it to you or your competitive team. What I'm trying to achieve with this video is I want to initiate your creative spark and mindset in strategy making. I made this strat in the matter of five to 10 minutes. I didn't really put much thought into it. It's a very basic strategy. It's fairly default for this bomb site. But the reason that things are default in this game is because they work. So as long as you execute the strat properly and you don't have any holes in it with players making wrong mistakes, your strategy will work. I spent 30 minutes making a good strategy and I've spent six hours making a good strategy. It doesn't really matter. But the littlest things in this game are what make the biggest mistakes in the end. So if you can spend the time and the energy, put in as much time as you can, think about every little thing you can, go into a custom game and look at the angles that you're provided with if you open up certain angles on the soft walls. Those are the things that make a good strategy go to an excellent strategy. When you spend those extra few hours into the strat and truly perfect it. As I said before, this website is called battleplanner.io. If you guys want to check it out, there will be a link in the description. Again, if you guys want to see me make an attacker sided strategy guide, get this video to 300 likes and you'll see that video posted in no time. There will also be links to my Twitch, Twitter, Discord, as well as my tip video playlist down below. I have over 20 different tip videos. So if you are struggling with something else in Rainbow Six Siege, I'm sure there's a video in that tip video playlist that can help you out. Make sure you guys go follow my Twitch. I stream on there almost every single day. I would love to see you there. If you have any further questions, you are free to ask me in that chat make sure you guys go follow me on twitter so that way you guys can keep up to date on all of my latest content and what's going on in my life i hope this helped you out in some way i truly do and if it gave you some new insight make sure you guys subscribe hit that bell notification button and i will see you guys in the next video